Okay, yeah, it's a little fast for another update, but I figured, you know, things have revolved a bit here. Um, well, we have concluded that the owner of the McDonald's really isn't interested in helping us at all. He's just blowing smoke up our butt. Because, yeah, again, totally blowing off everything is how we can't put any kind of timeline on this thing. We'll give it to the end of the month. You know, I just said we don't have, we have no way to put a timeline on this, you know. He hears what he wants to hear and just ignores the rest. So, also totally blew off our yeah because I, I we're trying we're trying to do a web design business here, web hosting but you know, often chance to be the first client here. And I worked up a mock up of his current website because his current website is pathetic. In fact, I you know it's not really doxing; it's a public website, BaselliMcDonald's.net. The fact that it's a .dot net should tell you volumes right there. It's totally freebie, but it's like. I was seeing better stuff on Prodigy back in the 90s, guys. I mean, this is really a pathetic website. And it's supposed to be, you know, he guys owns 12 restaurants. And with this website, I mean, I'm sorry. It's, it's sad. <laughs> I was doing far better stuff, you know, on my AOL stuff. Not when they were doing, when they were doing the homepages that way. I don't know how many different websites and pages go, but I, so I know what I'm talking about. And I just mocked up, you know, something that looks a little more professional. And this looks, this one, it looks like, a fan of McDonald's, not an owner of a McDonald's. You know, it's, like, it's very basic. It's got like a you know, one a rather strange McDonald's logo. It's one you know, on a green background. I, I think it's German, actually. They they do the green backgrounds. I know that, but they, mm. but it's not a standard. You know, the red and everything. Clark and it's like no pictures. Hmm? Clara Corporation. What about Clara Corporation? What they did? What you know? What they're you know, franchisees do with the website. I don't know what they do with the website. It's not there. You, know. you said they they uh, put links to the. Um, no, I don't know about yeah, I don't know about links. I'm talking about just, they just whatever corporate would do that you know, and then Clark because that was like '90s and I, I mean, websites were a thing back then for restaurants. But I mean, this guy and he just totally blew us off. It wasn't you know, I sent him the sample anyway or what the hell. It's got his name all over, so not much you could do with it anyway. But I'm trying to get this thing since this thing started to drift. But hopefully a, a few eyeballs will see it besides his. And it's like, hey, that's actually pretty good. You know, we might, wanna, might not want to blow this guy off so quick. You know, but but it's, no, we're, we're fine with that website. It's like, you can't be fine with that website. I'm sorry, but that is just pathetic. But anyway. So anyway, he's not willing to play ball. And he's, still, he's giving it to the end of the month, but we got to move the van. Like, okay. And I chose not to remind him that we're not parked on McDonald's property, so he can't, he really has no say over you got to move the van. No, he can't. We're not on your property. You had no say in this. Kmart knows we're here, and they're fine with us. And even you we're out, we're out of their, We're out of their way. You know? Even well, Eugene has told us this is not McDonald's yeah, property. Yeah, this is not McDonald's property, so he can't say we got to move. Mm-hmm. We're not really in that much line. You're not even really in line inside of the damn store. Because it's a... Let's see, because, so, because let's see, this angle over here, there's McDonald's way over there, see, if anything, we're kind of in line with the dumpsters right behind us, but, but beyond that, and that's behind a brick wall anyway, so, yeah, so despite the happy talk, and I, this is what I thought originally. You know, he said, "You, know, well, I gave you two hundred dollars. Would you go away?" It's basically what I'm asking. Would that you had, you know, and I point out, no, two hundred dollars went to it. No, two hundred dollars is not enough. I said like three times in that for you know, one conversation. We, you know, we need about five six hundred bucks to get this thing fixed, at least. It's five to five six hundred bucks, assuming nothing is bent in the end, like a bent valve or anything. If it's just hung up and nothing's damaged, it's about five six hundred bucks to tear it apart, replace the belt, put it back together. You know. Maybe replacing the radio would, would cover that bill, too. But, no, 200 bucks would not do it. 200 bucks would feed us for a while. That's not enough for us to move. Because this, this van is immobile as it stands right now. Might also get us into a hotel. Yeah, it'd get us in a hotel for a couple of days and well-fed. But we'd be right back here in this very same parking spot. But this van is not, is not capable of moving. He just totally ignored that. So, a nice little happy talk means absolutely nothing to this guy. So... I mean, uh, for those in the area, I'll do I'll do a little mini thing. This is the the uh, McDonald's, uh, roughly 58th and Kipling. 
Hey, he keeps you know, getting this thing. There's been complaints and people, you know, promising never to come back as long as we're there. I frankly doubt that. Um, because yeah, it's it's the usual. There have been complaints and there's no uh, nothing Penn nothing. Call. Oh, it's just shit. yeah, just yeah, but yeah, but it's the usual thing. It's like just vague people have been complaining and nothing really specific. And plus, uh, I've been in there enough, and I yeah, I know the regulars and they, they're they're still coming. Okay. And plus, it's also you know we're not in there every damn day from open to close. So some of the stuff about people that come back, well. We're not there every day, so what the hell is that? I'm, there are some illusions that when the web, you know, when the Wi-Fi went out, that they were keeping it off because of us. Like, that's stupid. If that's seriously the truth, that you were keeping the Wi-Fi out to drive us off, you want to explain that to the customers in there why they can't access their Wi-Fi? Well, because we have a couple of bumps coming once a month. Well, they're not here now, are they? <laughs> Real smart there. Yeah, talk about you know. Chopping off your nose to spite your left foot, you know. So. Yeah, I can imagine what. So and yeah, on one of the cashiers' point, of, no, that is not what's happening here. It goes out, it goes out because it's not just the the public Wi-Fi that goes out when it goes. It's also the stuff the store uses to contact with the radio with the credit cards. Mm -hmm. And last time it went out, it was sporadic, and then it finally just so no, it, that's nothing designed. Can you imagine if some so, of the regulars so, yeah. were to hear this? So feeding a little, feeding a line on that type of thing. Like, this, this guy is just, you know, he's dropped several notches over the past few conversations here. You know? And we've been trying to keep him updated. Look, we've got, we, we're working on it. We're trying to get out of here. I mean, we've got lines on the house in Florida and everything. That's one, thing, one of the reasons why I'm insisting on a three-bedroom, at least, because I want to set one up as a studio and do this for real. And do this, you know, professional, you know. Get all the doodads in there. So I'm not having to do in the in my van or in the back of a McDonald's or the back of a shopping or a supermarket by the frozen food because that's what the only socket, you know, available to plug in the stuff. And where the uh, Wi-Fi is available. Yeah, that's another, that's another weird thing about the, you know, the this uh, supermarket over here. It's a, it's a Kroger-owned thing, you know, King Supers out here in in Colorado, which might not mean it's anything outside of Colorado, but, you know, the Kroger means a little something more than everyone else. Um, they got really good Wi-Fi way back by the deli area. The free Wi-Fi up front, I cannot connect on that to save my life. So anything I got to do, it's going to be way in back. And there's not many available power outlets back there. It's like the, the one plug-in back there. Yeah, there's is, a there's a few, but the one that's really available is like right next to it. That's one I did last night actually. Was right next is the that's a meat cooler there and there's a sock in the end I like, plug in there and do it from, you know, sitting on one of the scooters and precariously balancing the computer <laughs> on one of the things and just sitting the phone there, but yeah, that but so I can actually have enough power to do things. And we have discovered a new manager that we actually love. Yeah, they, they, they said King Super's night crew has been very good to us on there, for the most part. But this one manager... So like one manager was feeding us water, but we kind of overabused the privilege, started getting flack of us, so we had to space off on that. Thankfully, baby sister back in Virginia threw us some more money, so we can, we'll be able to cover our own meal for the night and not, you know, let that die down a little more. And we found this one manager over yeah. there who, well... She can't speak, but she seems. Well, she's to like, like you know, she's dumb. Can't speak. She's kind of hearing impaired, I think. But you know, so she seems to have no problem with. There's only really one manager left over there, working that occasionally closes that has a problem with us being there. And even then, she, you know, she doesn't put up much of a fuss. I think mainly because when she's there, we hang out in back, and then you know, it's don't that one of we don't come up day until crew, yeah. Well, the day crew's too busy. I, I can understand day crew being uptight about it because we're in. We are literally in the way during day. Because, you know, we can't just, you know, take over two of the scooters and, you know, because they're, they're too busy. So I, I understand. I have no problem being chewed out for being over there during the day for long periods, you know. It'd be nice if there was a socket back in the deli. I could hit him on the table and be plugged in and then get it going. Or better yet, if they, they it, were to turn on the power again to those, you know, to those outside outlets. Yeah, it's another thing they're kind of snacky about. Because like, one time, the main, you need to plug that outside because there, there are sockets outside. But then we got, you know, suddenly they they don't work anymore. So the, thanks a lot, guys. Really, really appreciate the outreach. 
But anyway, yeah, cause the other night, you know, the other, was it yesterday or, you know, did, went to the library? Yeah, yesterday, yesterday. I, yesterday I hiked to the library. That's 20 blocks. That, that'd be, that'd be a bit of a hike before the stroke. Okay. With about a 15 pound bat, your computer bag hanging off my shoulder. It's like, it, it's not fun. At my age, and my condition, <laughs> I mean, you can argue I need the exercise, but not that badly, okay? And, and you wonder and it, why and it's still, and, it's still, and it still gets pretty dark here pretty quick. Because <laughs> I had I started heading back around 5. It was already, you know, starting to get down. It's still getting dark pretty quick out here. But it's only March. <laughs> but, yeah, you know. The, so I want to get back into, you know, hopefully... <laughs> Like I said, right now he's giving us till the end of the month. And I've already been told don't come back in the store, you know, anymore. Which is fine. Okay, we're getting kind of fed up with McDonald's food anyway at this point. Yeah. But yeah, it's like at this point it's the keep Bob and Stuff Alive fund. <laughs> so that I can start doing the you know the stuff, you know. Let's just put it this way, guys. Um, Cause I got, when no. we used to work at McDonald's, we kind of had the same problem. Only difference was there were occasional, you know, occasional swaps with, you know, well, other get, restaurants. Getting tired of the food, as she's talking about. I never really got tired of it. And, of course, also, matter of, you know, one, we had jobs where we were being paid. And in my case, there was... Literally, a Burger King within walking distance. There was a Wendy's across the street. There, was a, there were plenty of options. Okay, I didn't have to eat McDonald's. <laughs> you know, I was also in my twenties and able to get around a lot better. I also had a car that worked. So if we really want to get somewhere, you know. Yeah, so. it's just the fact that, well, when I was living in Florida, you know, we'd swap out occasionally with the. Uh, the Chinese, and I think there was an Italian restaurant down the, you yeah, know, down the road. And we're getting kind of inside baseball here and totally off track. Oh, hush. Well, it is. Okay, nobody cares about our adventures at McDonald's anymore. But Certainly was, the owners of McDonald's really don't give a rip about, you know. Because everything, everything we've done is tried to help, okay? We tried to be, you know, be an asset, not a detriment, okay? I have no idea if they passed on anything we said about, you know, how to get a handle on the drive through I mean, you know, I mean, this guy can, you know, trying to be nice about this, you know, but, you know, then, yeah. <laughs> right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Putting a smile and putting in that pleasant, pleasant tone of the voice, but still, it's like, you know. There's a Dennis Leary song that applies to Well, I'm also beginning to think, you know, we should have at least taken the 200 bucks and, you know, but, again, yeah, it wouldn't have done any damn good. We couldn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know. Might want to wrap this up. Yeah, we're getting a little long here. So, okay, because <sighs> again, here's the numbers here. I'm figuring about five, six hundred bucks. At least get the engine, get this thing running. Mm. Just yes. to just to get the you know the thing take you know get it over to good. You can tow it to Goodyear for free. Got AAA. Before or after labor cost? That is the labor cost because mm. the belt is like fifteen bucks. And it's all labor to tear to get the you got to pretty much take off the entire front half of the engine, and all everything's attached to the engine to get to the damn belt. Mm -hmm. And then it's a matter of pull out the old belt, line everything back up, hold to, you know, man, that's hope if nothing's bent in there, if there's a bent valve thing, then guess what? Then they got to pull the head, replace the valve, and all that happy horse shit. So yeah, you know, again, five six hundred bucks if we're lucky. And again, maybe you know it might be also include you know replacing the radiator in that total there. So. Because that's one that, yeah, that has to be done, because otherwise it'll just, you know, we'll be go ahead and drive around the block without overheating. So, but that's what we're looking at as far as, you know, just getting mobile. Being able to go around and then annoy some other business somewhere. But as far as getting out of here and everything packed up, moved, heading towards Florida, probably about $3,000, I'm figured. Because it's about 2500 for the view hole. With the, with the trailer to get this thing on there running or not. And then pack, you know, go down to the storage unit, pack it all up, and get on the road. Hopefully by then we'll also, you know, be able to 
give a good story to the bank. But yes, I, I have a job lined up. This is how much I'm going to be making. Give me my money so I can get my house. Get down there and move straight in. And we hopefully have a happy ending here and I can start doing my stuff. I got, I got a pile of models stacked up waiting to do videos on. I, you know, that one P50 Enterprise, I want to get going on it. You know? And I would like to have money to start doing, you know, a kit bashing thing, my, you know, my, uh, the ship and that, you know, little, I don't know, I don't want to call it a cosplay thing, but ship, I want to do stuff with the Eldridge, where it's a, you know, a barely revit enterprise, you know, a some class with, you know, mishmash, you know, type of thing. It's, it's, it's getting my answer to, you know, the Mikhail's Navy, you know, Star Trek doesn't have Mikhail Navy type of thing. I want to do stuff with that, and I would, you know, I've got a, a one that needs repair of uh, a mashup between a kit bash between a, a cutaway enterprise and a and the refit of that uh, old, old old enterprise you know refit enterprise, which is kind of the proof of concept. I also got an EDB one made from the twenty five hundred kit. But I would it'd be fun to do a one three fifty scale one. Now that's two hundred bucks just in models there, so I didn't, you know need some income coming in here. Also need more people to subscribe. Get over this hump here and get and so I can get back to being monetized again. Because this is getting older. I've got like 35 bucks waiting in AdSense. <laughs> waiting for more to come in so I, can actually, so I can actually cut a check and get back going here. But yeah, I need to get subscribers going again here. You know, we got 638 last I checked. I feel sorry for uh, Trek Zone in that regard. He's like sitting at 992. And he was getting, you know, I know he was getting checks, and he's got it out in the wind here. So help Matt Miller out once in a while over a Trek Zone. Get him over that hump, you know? Ugh, <laughs> I can only subscribe once, okay? I'm, I'm already in there, so. I pity the fool who owns yeah. this McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get this thing going here, guys, because, you know, I like to get set up in a studio before the next season of Voyage. And you know, I do before the, you know, we get the in the fall with the next season of uh, Orville, so we can get cracking on that. And I, you know, want, you know, like to get some gaming stuff going because I, I only I try getting Star Trek online, and I don't know if it's a web connection or just the you know the crappy equipment I got, but I I got stuck in an empty room with no doors and no community, and no way to get out. And it's like okay, this is fun. No one to attack, and <laughs> no one to get me out of it. I think I tried signing up for the Trek Yards crew, and I'll try wrap again. All right, all right, let's wrap it up here. So, PayPal, Patreon, down below. And I don't know if it'd do any good, but maybe cl you know, click on, you know, BacelliMcDonald's.net and get him saying, hey, your website sucks. Get this, give this guy a shot, you know? I wouldn't say it quite that way. I'm not, you know, doing the pitch. Let him do. Yeah, go ahead and tell him it sucks. It does. <laughs> it's like kind of a pale blue thing with, again, a, you know, a McDonald's logo on a green, uh, on a green background, which is odd, and it's just straight text. It's like it's like something someone cooked up in the in the '90s, and it's like, but it's this year. It's got 20, 2018 on it. <laughs> How anyone could think this is an adequate website in this day and age is beyond me. Okay. There are eighth graders that got better websites for their for their fanfic, <laughs> and this is supposed to be a professional. You know, owns twelve McDonald's. There's not a single picture on there except the McDonald's logo. You think something like this, Baselli and Sons? You think you like have the picture, the same picture he's got on the wall in there of the family? You know, it's supposed to be there. And then you know the locations, put a picture of each store. This is basic shit. Come on. <laughs> so yeah, again. PayPal Patreon down below help us, you know, get fed and hopefully if some if this hits, you know, and gets really going. Again, if you know six hundred and thirty-eight subscribers. If everyone gave like five bucks, that's us out of the state. Right there. So Derve, half of you give ten bucks. Same thing. We're out of here. Yeah. Or if all you were to give ten bucks. <laughs> Again, if everybody gave ten bucks, then we're out here in style, you know. We don't have to put those on a on a trailer necessarily. You have one of us, you know, ride blocker and then no one drive the truck. <laughs> I'm not trying to drive all the way out of the state. Oh.
only take freaking breaks. Either they get in an accident or. Well, anyway, but anyway, we'd we'd build. We have plenty of you know, hotel money and gas money and food money and everything. Might even build a throw. You know, despite the VA loan, throw a down payment on the house anyway, just to really you know reduce those payments. Anyway, that should do it. So again, PayPal, Patreon down below. Take pity on us, guys. We we're, we really want to do something good here, but we can't do it without you guys at this point, because kids just only do, can only do so much. She's got her own problems. Thanks to the IRS deciding to play patty cake with a check for so damn long. But we've already gone through that, so catch you later.